हेलो एवरीवन आप सभी का फिर से एक बार स्वागत है मेरे यूट्यूब चैनल में जिसका नाम है कॉमर्स ट्रेजर इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस के यू डी एम कॉम फर्स्ट सेमेस्टर सिक्योरिटी एनालिसिस एंड पोर्टफोलियो मैनेजमेंट 2018 पेपर टू मार्क्स क्वेश्चन आई हैव ऑलरेडी मेड वीडियो ऑन टू पेपर्स एज वेल एज टू पेपर्स इफ़ यू हैव नॉट सीन दैट वीडियो आई एम पुटिंग द लिंक इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन एज वेल एज इन द आई बटन डू वॉच दोज वीडियोज and without wasting much time let us go to the 2018 paper state various motive for investment so as we know people invest for different reasons let us see the important motives or purpose for which people invest the first one is to earn returns many people invest their money so that they can earn returns on their money which otherwise would be left idle in their cupboards second to have a safe future so people invest because the future is very uncertain and they may require amount in future therefore they make investment third one to save tax people also invest because they get various incentives or various deductions from income tax which will help you to reduce the income tax liability or tax liability and therefore people invest fourth to maintain liquidity people also invest in order to maintain liquidity liquidity refers to having cash or having certain sort of investment which can be easily converted into cash any time whenever we want the next motive for investment is to diversify risk so usually in case of companies they invest because the risk is very high and therefore to reduce some sort of risk they invest in different securities and the last point is to hedge against inflation because day by day the inflation is going on increasing and the money which we have in our hand may not be worth the same in the coming days so therefore we invest in order to hedge against the inflation so these are some motives for investment the next question is give the meaning of maintenance margin and margin call maintenance margin is the minimum amount of margin that an investor is required to maintain in his margin account so whenever you are maintaining a margin account or whenever you are using a margin trading facility you have to maintain a certain amount of margin in your account and that is called as minimum margin or maintenance margin and what is margin call margin call is a call given by the broker to the investor to deposit additional cash or securities when the balance in the margin account falls below the minimum maintenance margin so whenever the margin account balance is less than the minimum margin then you get a call from your broker to either invest more cash or to deposit more securities that is called as a margin call the next question is state how changes in inflation and tax rate affects stock prices so inflation has a negative relationship with stock market prices high rate of inflation affects the stock prices adversely because when the cost of material is going to be high the prices are going to be high which will reduce the demand of the product and thereby reducing the sales as well as profitability of the product so therefore more the inflation less will be the stock market performance and stock market prices when we come to tax rates it is also having the same type of relation that is a negative relation establishes between stock market prices and tax rate higher the tax rate then lower is going to be the profit after tax and investor won't get the expected returns or more the incentives on tax given by the government higher is going to be the stock market prices because it creates a positive impact on the investors so this is how you need to remember about inflation and tax rate both of them having negative relation when they are less stock market prices are more and when they are more stock market prices usually goes down the next question is what do you mean by random walk theory so random walk theory suggests that changes in the stock market price have the same distribution and are independent of each other therefore it is assumed that past movement or trend of a stock price or market cannot be used to predict its future movement so as per this theory the stock market price are independent of each other which means that 
the yesterday's price or day before yesterday price does not have any influence or does not have any impact on today's price they are independent of each other in short random walk theory proclaims that stock takes a random or unpredictable path that makes all methods of predicting stock prices incapable in the long run so they are trying to say that the stock market cannot be predicted because they are just the random numbers which just occurs because of some reasons the next question is differentiate between strong and semi strong form of market efficiency so as per your emh theory that is efficient market hypothesis theory there are three forms of market strong form semi strong form and weak form let us see what is this strong form strong form of efficiency says that price reflects all the available information that is public as well as private weak and semi strong forms are subset for strong form of efficiency in strong form no investor is able to earn abnormal returns by using the information in a superior manner so strong form of efficiency is nothing but it says that all the information is going to be reflected in your stock market price anything which happens in market is going to be reflected on stock market prices in case of strong form of efficiency coming to semi strong form of efficiency it says that stock prices are fully reflected to publicly available information and not all the information they reflect market as well as non market information such as macro economic data industry reports announcements dividend yields etc now also let us understand what is this weak form of efficiency so this reflects all the past historical information on the stock prices it says that security prices reflects the information related to past price trading volumes rate of return etc it means that previous data has an influence on the stock market prices so when we see this three forms you have to just remember that all these three forms are interlinked to one another the first is called as weak form which is a subset of the other two the second is called as semi strong form and the third outer layer is called as a strong form of efficiency so weak form it is based on past data semi strong is based on public data which also includes the past data and strong form is based on public and private data which also includes past data so remember this diagram and understand what are the three forms of market efficiency the next question is what is minimum variance portfolio a minimum variance portfolio is an investing method that helps you to maximize return and minimize risk in simple a minimum variance portfolio is a situation where the portfolio risk is lower or it is a combination of securities in which the risk is going to be least so whenever you mix or whenever you bring together two different types of securities which results into least risk and maximum returns that is called as minimum variance portfolio now how do you calculate this minimum variance portfolio whenever the correlation is plus 1 or minus 1 we can compute the weight of the first security using sd of y divided by sd of x plus sd of y so in this way you get weight of first security then weight of second security is 1 minus weight of first security if the correlation is anything apart from plus 1 or minus 1 in such case weight of x or weight of the first security is going to be variance of y minus covariance of xy divided by variance of y plus variance of x minus 2 into covariance of x and y so these are the formulas to calculate the weights of the different securities in which proportion you have to mix and that will result to the minimum variance portfolio what is meant by efficient frontier an efficient frontier is a line representing all the efficient portfolio plotted on a risk return graph it is a set of optimum portfolio that offers higher returns for given level of risk or lowest risk for given level of returns let us assume there are three securities security a b and c security a gives 10% return b also gives 10% return and c also gives 10% return and risk which we are taking for a is 8 
for b is 5 and for c is 4 so in this case you are getting same level of return but the risk which is lowest is the efficient portfolio or let us take another example where risk are equal that is let us assume the risk are 5 5 and 5 for a b c but the returns are 10 12 and 14 so in this case at the same level of risk whatever security gives the high return that is called as the efficient portfolio so efficient frontier is nothing but it includes all such efficient portfolio which will be plotted on a risk return graph what is meant by systematic risk so risk are of two types systematic and unsystematic risk let us see what is systematic risk systematic risk is the risk that affects the entire market or the whole market and not just a single stock or a industry it is also called as market risk non-diversifiable risk and non-controllable risk you cannot control systematic risk you cannot diversify systematic risk and it affects the whole market it is further divided into market risk inflation risk and interest risk Examples of systematic risk are natural disaster, weather events, inflation changes, interest rate changes, war, etc. Unsystematic risk on other hand are risks which are controllable, which are diversifiable and which are related to one specific industry. It does not include the whole market. It belongs to only one company or one industry. The next question is what is Jensen's alpha? How is it calculated? The Jensen's measure or Jensen's alpha is a risk adjusted performance measure that represents the average return on a portfolio or investment over and above that predicted by CAPM model given portfolios or beta of the investment and the average market return. In simple sentence, it is nothing but the returns which you get over and above the expected return that is called as Jensen's alpha. So how do you calculate Jensen's alpha? Jensen's alpha is equal to expected return of the portfolio which we compute as per some model minus RF plus RM minus RF into beta which is nothing but the CAPM model. So this is how you compute Jensen's alpha. What do you mean by factor models? Factor models are financial models that use factors that can be technical, that can be fundamental, that can be macroeconomic or any other to define security risk and returns. So factor models are nothing but the models which are used to find out the expected returns. You make use of these models to find out what is going to be the expected returns? Some popular factor models are your CAPM model that is capital asset pricing model, APT model that is arbitrage pricing theory model or multi-factor model of Pharma and French. So this is all about this paper. If you have any doubts, you can comment me in the comment box. If you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon so that you can get a notification as soon as I upload a new video. Thank you for watching this video and we shall meet again with another video.